Intel, the semiconductor chip giant that powers your PCs, was in the news recently, but for the quantum devices. If you're a regular viewer of Quantum News Monthly, you already know that there is a race going on between different technology platforms to build the best quantum computer. Intel's in the race too, but their qubit of choice, the silicon quantum dot, has been a bit behind in this race. But this May, Intel published a Nature paper that was in the news for making key advances towards scalable quantum computing. As a couple of quantum geeks, we decided to look into the study and figure out what key advances were actually made. So today, we'll explain what silicon quantum dots are, how Intel's innovative fabrication can help standardize their production at scale, and whether this will save Intel from falling behind in the quantum race. At the end, we'll talk about the technology breakthroughs that Intel will need to come out on top, so stay tuned till the end. As always, we're your hosts, Tebo and Mingyu, and this video is just our opinion as quantum computing researchers. Although we're not experts in quantum dots, we understand the importance of producing standardized qubits at mass scale. Backers of silicon quantum dots believe that unlike atomic or superconducting qubits, silicon quantum dots can be scaled more rapidly because they are produced using the same fabrication processes that are used to mass produce a trillion semiconductor chips every year for classical computers. In this figure, you can see the basic principle of a semiconductor transistor. When you apply a small voltage to this gate, you can turn on the flow of current from the source to the drain. This is basically a switch, and it is used for all logical operations in a classical computer. A silicon quantum dot is structurally kind of similar, with the addition of these barrier and plunger gates, which are responsible for isolating a single electron. This electron is the qubit that's used for logical operations in a quantum computer. The electron can be in a state of spin up or spin down, or a superposition of both representing the possible quantum states. And by the way, the fundamental principle of these devices is the same as the quantum dots that won the Nobel Prize in 2023 in chemistry. Watch our video where we explain that. But electrons are very light and sensitive to noise. So coherently controlling them across every quantum dot in a chip requires near-perfect fabrication of these devices. This is where Intel's first key advance comes in. Intel made their devices on silicon, silicon germanium heterostructures which have previously been difficult to do on an industrial scale. These devices have lower disorder than the alternate, which is silicon MOS devices, which are widely used in industry. Disorder here is a measure of how inconsistent these devices you manufacture are from each other. So lower disorder is better. So yeah, Intel's innovation was to develop an industry-compatible fabrication recipe for making devices of a composition and structure that has much lower disorder. We can see this in a figure from the paper. The box plots show that as the Intel scientists optimize their fabrication process, the spread of the threshold voltages becomes smaller, indicating that the disorder got better. We don't know all the details of Intel's new fab process because it's a trade secret, but it should allow Intel to make thousands to millions of chips with millions of quantum dots per chip much more consistently into the future. Right now, Intel has a really high production success rate of about 99.8% for quantum dots themselves and 96% for the quantum devices that consist of 12 quantum dots each. But it's not enough to improve your fabrication if you cannot measure your devices efficiently enough to characterize them. And here comes Intel's second key advance, which is quickly and conveniently measuring all the quantum devices in a 300 mm wafer. Typically, after you fabricate a quantum device, you have to load it into a dilution refrigerator like this, connect all the wires up, and then cool down the chip which can take about a day before you can take measurements of your device quality. But using this method is obviously too slow to innovate on an industrial scale. So Intel worked with Blueforce and AEMA4 to develop a cryogenic wafer prober, which can cool the whole wafer to one Kelvin in just two hours. A 300 millimeter wafer is an industry standard disk of silicon that's used to fabricate many chips at once and Intel developed the tech to measure the whole wafer of devices in one go. That's over 200 devices per wafer. Instead of testing each device one by one, and each device here has 12 quantum dots. This way, Intel can collect statistics and pick out the bad devices much more efficiently, as is needed for an industrial quantum chip manufacturer. Clearly, Intel made big advances in some important steps of building a scalable practical quantum computer. But it also kind of feels like they leapfrogged over some initial steps. If you ask me how to build a fault-tolerant quantum computer that can hack Bitcoin, I would say that first, you need to pick a suitable qubit. 
then demonstrate good coherence, and then achieve good gate fidelity for single and two-cubed operations, then you want to show that you can maintain connectivity and gate fidelity when you increase to 10, 100, 1000 qubits, and hopefully up to millions in the future. And at each step, we want to streamline how we test, manufacture, and package these quantum processors and allow the community to play with them and come up with new applications. With large enough qubit counts, we can afford to do continuous error correction, and this should be done fault tolerantly. Do all of that successfully, and you can be rolling some serious cash. By the way, we explained error correction and fault tolerance in previous videos. But this is where Intel's approach is different from most other quantum players. They figured out how to streamline testing and manufacturing for hundreds of devices. But we don't know their gate performance for just 10 qubits. For example, so far we do not know their 2 qubit fidelities for their 12 qubit devices. And we also don't know their ideas or plans to scale the device architecture beyond nearest neighbor interactions or beyond 1D configuration. Perhaps they have plans, but are choosing to keep it a secret. We don't know. Their single qubit fidelity is about 3 nines, which is good. But come on, don't gatekeep your 2 qubit fidelity. See what I did there? Gatekeep. Gate fidelity. <clears throat> Back to the point. This is not just us saying this. This news article from Nature also commented that it is not yet clear how a 2D grid of qubits that's required for error correction could be achieved with this style of quantum devices. A 2D grid of qubits would have higher connectivity than 1D because each qubit would have more neighbors to interact with. We've discussed an attempt in this direction on our series before, but scaling a 2D grid of quantum dots is still a challenge. It's obviously super cool that Intel can manufacture and test a lot of devices quickly, and we can see how this could accelerate their progress towards devices with high gate fidelity and connectivity. Just try a bunch of different things, learn from your mistakes, pick the best approach, and reiterate faster than your competitors with atomic qubits can align their damn lasers. That being said, the two qubit gate fidelities and connectivity still remain as open problems for the semiconductor quantum dot community. If Intel Quantum can solve these tough bottlenecks, progress from then on will surely get a boost from the manufacturing and testing advances that Intel has showed this month. So we're very excited to see what happens in the future. We put in a lot of time researching and presenting these video reviews, so if you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. None of us make a dime from these videos, not even our friends who do video and graphics editing behind the scenes. We volunteer time because we're truly passionate about quantum science and want to foster nice discussions around these exciting field. So your likes, comments, shares, they truly mean a lot. Thank you, and see you in the next one.